Hi, in this video we are going to see about calcium homeostasis. So when such a question is asked, you all should always start your answer with the normal value of calcium. So in the introduction, you can write the normal serum calcium level as 9 to 11 milligram per deciliter. And we know that calcium is mainly uh, regulated by three hormones, which are parathyroid hormone, vitamin D and calcitonin. So there are three hormones that are involved in regulation of calcium, parathyroid hormones, vitamin D and calcitonin of which parathyroid hormone and vitamin D increases the calcium levels whereas calcitonin as the name suggests it's something which tones so calcitonin will decrease the calcium level okay so first we'll see the actions of parathormone so parathormone or the parathyroid hormone is secreted from the parathyroid glands which are present inside the thyroid gland okay so whenever there is a decrease in the serum calcium it will be sensed by the calcium sensing receptors which are present on the parathyroid gland okay so it will sense the decrease in calcium will be sensed by the calcium sensing receptors and thereby there will be increased parathormon secretion and this in turn will act on the bones to cause increased bone resorption so that there will be an increase in the serum calcium not only bones it will also act on the kidneys so that it can activate vitamin D and through vitamin D it will also act on the intestines too and increase the calcium reabsorption. So the net effect is that by all these actions that is by action on the bones, action on the kidney and action on the intestine it will increase the calcium level to normal. Okay. Next we will see the role of vitamin D. So before that we have to know about the synthesis of vitamin D. So, the 7-dehydrocholesterol which is present in the keratinocyte or the skin will be activated in the presence of uh, UV rays by the sun to cholecalciferol. So, initially there was 7-dehydrocholesterol seven, seven present in the skin which in, in the presence of UV rays from the sun is converted to cholecalciferol. Now, this cholecalciferol with the help of the enzyme 25-hydroxylase is converted to 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol in the liver. So, from the skin, now the organ is liver. So, in the liver, cholecalciferol is converted to 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol by 25 hydroxylase. And next, this 25 cholecalciferol, hydroxy cholecalciferol, is converted to 125 dihydroxycalciferol by the enzyme 1 alpha hydroxylase. Now, this is an important enzyme because it is a rate limiting step. So, 1 alpha hydroxylase will convert 25 hydroxycholecalciferol to 125 dihydroxycholecalciferol. And this step is mediated by parathormone. So, here is the role of parathormone in vitamin D activation. So, 1-alpha hydroxylase is the rate limiting step and that is going to convert 25 hydroxycholecalciferol to 125 dihydroxycholecalciferol and this is the active form of vitamin D. So, this is how active vitamin D is synthesized. Now, what are the actions? The action of vitamin D is on the intestine. So, suppose this is the intestinal cell and this is the lumen and this is the interstitium. So, we know that calcium has to be absorbed from the lumen, right? So, the, all the calcium that we have on the diet, from the diet should be absorbed into the intestinal cell. So, for that we have got a channel which is called TRPV6, right? And inside the cell, all this calcium will be bind, bound together by this calcium binding protein which is called calbindin, okay? And finally, it has to be reabsorbed into the blood, right? So, for that we have got two channels to pump out this calcium. So, the first channel uses energy and that is called the magnesium calcium ATPase and another channel that we have got is the sodium calcium exchanger. Okay. So, these two channels will work to reabsorb calcium into the interstitium. So, what is the action of vitamin D in this procedure? See, vitamin D will actually uh, accelerate all these steps. It will cause an upregulation of the calcium channel on the apical membrane. It will increase the amount of this calbindin 
that's a calcium binding protein and also increases the movement of the calcium out of the cell so that calcium can be reabsorbed into the bloodstream okay so the actions of vitamin d are it increases the upregulation of calcium channel on the uh, epithelial membrane it increases the calcium binding protein which is calbindin and also increase the movement of the calcium out of the cell so these are the important functions of the uh, vitamin d on intestine now we'll see the action on kidney so see in the kidneys it again increases the reabsorption of calcium from the distal tubule so in the distal tubule it basically causes an increased reabsorption of calcium okay and finally on the bones it along with parathormone causes mobilization of calcium from the bone into the blood so remember we know that parathormone acts on the bone to cause bone resorption thereby increasing the calcium level so here also along with parathormone vitamin d also causes activation of the osteoclast so that bone resorption occurs and there will be increased calcium in the blood stream okay so some applied aspects related to vitamin d are one rickets so we know that if there's a deficiency of vitamin d in the childhood then the child will develop a condition called rickets whereas if it is in the adulthood then it is called osteomalacia so these are two applied aspects related to vitamin d deficiency and the next hormone that is involved in calcium homeostasis is calcitonin so calcitonin as i said before it decreases the calcium level and it is released by the para follicular c cells of the thyroid so para follicular c cells of the thyroid and it is released in response to elevated calcium level so whenever the uh, calcium level in the blood is more the calcitonin will work up so that the calcium level can be restored to normal so here how does it do so it does so by increasing the calcium excretion urine okay so so far we were talking about reabsorption but now calcitonin will cause calcium excretion it also inhibits the function of osteoclast thereby inhibiting bone resorption so basically it's just the opposite of the actions of parathormone and vitamin d it also prevents the maternal bone resorption in excess calcium loss during lactation so during the lactation period calcitonin will make sure that there is no maternal bone resorption so these are the actions of calcitonin now for some applied aspects related to calcitonin it is useful for the treatment of pages disease so see pages disease is a condition in which there is an increased osteoclastic activity so calcitonin can be used so that it decreases the uh, osteoclastic activity okay so this is about calcitonin now what are the other hormones that are involved in calcium homeostasis one is glucocorticoids see remember in cushing syndrome we've got osteoporosis right which means glucocorticoids mainly causes increases the calcium level that is why when there was an increased glucocorticoids in cushing syndrome it caused osteoporosis so if you remember cushing syndrome you'll be able to remember the action of glucocorticoids next growth hormone again growth hormone is the hormone which helps in growth so naturally it will maintain a positive calcium balance which means there will be more calcium in the blood it increases the serum calcium level and finally estrogen estrogen prevents osteoporosis that is it it will not allow bone resorption that is why during menopause when estrogen decreases there is osteoporosis for females so these are three other hormones that you can remember in case of calcium homeostasis now for some additional scoring points you can also write about this pool calcium pool present inside our blood so here in this is a basically a flow chart which shows how the calcium is entering our body and how it is absorbed in the intestine and uh, what is the relationship with the bone and how is it excreted in the urine so from this we can see that we have to have at least 1 g per day because around 825 mg per day is lost in feces and 175 is lost in urine which means we have to have at least 1 mg 1 g per day only then the ecf pool will be maintained at uh, the normal values okay so this is an additional scoring point which can be written when calcium homeostasis is asked so i hope this concept is clear thank you